Mark has been trained by police in proper restraint techniques. I need the cigarette. And he's about to teach Kai a lesson. I'm gonna restrain him. Okay. Oh, what are you doing? Have you got your passport? No. I put, no, well, I did put that in your bag. 16-year-old Celeste from Perth has given her mother nothing but grief for the last 12 months. I'm gonna miss you like anything. I'm not gonna miss you. It seems that she directs all her anger or whatever you want to call at me only. I don't think I need to change my behaviour. I think it's just my mum's delusional or something. You gonna give me a cuddle when we go? No. No? No. I'm not even gonna get a cuddle. No. That breaks my heart that I used to have this little girl that seemed to love me, and now I don't. Her mum hopes that living with a family overseas for a week will give Celeste a new perspective. I don't think other parents will be able to control me if my own can't. I'm really at my wit's end. To people that don't like me, I say fuck you, because I probably don't like you too. Every weekend we go out, we get drunk. Let's get slizzard. Or well, in our words, slizzard. <laughs> We drank from funnels, we played beer pong. One night there was four girls and we had 51 litres of booze and we downed it all. I actually named her Celeste because Celeste means a gift from heaven. She's always been quite out there as far as her personality goes, but from the age of about 13, she's just got worse and worse. She really makes me cry at times. You know what do we get while my friends are here sleeping after we go out? Seriously, don't ever do this again. I feel like I've got to pull my hair out because I just don't know what to do with this kid anymore. I take mom's car every now and then. Woo! Freedom! We drink drive a bit. Usually we'll nominate the soberest person to drive. Oh! I have often laid awake at night wondering where she is. It's always quite scary, you know, when she's out and about. I just had sex. I can definitely see her future going down the drain this year if she doesn't sort of get her act together. Oh shit. <laughs> Cops. Live free, die proud, have fun, play loud. Of course I'm going to smoke. No. Travelling with Celeste is 16-year-old Kai from Sydney. This is a teenager who only does things his way. Kai's bad attitude, I think it has a lot to do with not having an appreciation for the things he has, like his family, his home, lack of respect. You know, how do you find Kai? How do you get your phone? I don't know. I think I'm like... A little troublemaker, to be honest. When you go, just have a little respect. Have a bit of respe uh, respect for other people. Respect. Jay's at her wit's end. She doesn't sleep hardly at all at night. I like my behaviour how it is. I don't think these people overseas can change you one bit. They can have fun trying. I'm just cool, <laughs> rowdy. Get up to Mr. Go pick fights. I like my pills, speed, coke, uh, acid. I love the affection girls give me. Um, I think it's my look, just in general. The people who he mixes up with, they're dangerous. Well, sometimes I get a job it's for rolling someone. I go out, I bash the person, and I take the stuff and leg it. I have that fear that he's going to end up dead. Kai does come across fearless. Nothing's going to ever happen to him. I'm just walking through the town centre, which I'm not meant to be in. If he gets caught walking through there, he'll be arrested. And, I mean, that leads to a criminal record. What's going on? It's a bomb. Can you leave my room? Can you shut up? No. I just do things to piss her off because she's pissed me off. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> Personally, I get very concerned that he's cutting his life very short. I don't think I understand how happy I am right now. I feel helpless. I I'm losing here. <gasps> yeah, I'm loving life. It's mad. <laughs> so 
Yeah. Well, I'll catch you later. Bye. Our teens are heading to the USA and the state of North Carolina. Dad Mark is an international equine specialist and Mum Becky has her hands full with Sydney, Chloe and baby Anderson. Mark's parents also live on the farm. This is a family that's focused on showing troubled teens a different path. We use horses for therapy for at-risk kids. This jump here is going to represent something that you guys have got to get over and get past. Uh, we have hundreds of kids that come through here on a monthly basis. Here they deal with tough kids and hand out tough love. Dedicus, were you talking? Yes. It's also important for the teens to learn about caring for others um, besides themselves. Yeah. Everybody has responsibilities and the animals come first. My parents are very strong-willed and they're not afraid to deal out consequences. Sydney, have you been out to check on the goat and feeder yet? Not yet. You need to get that done. Everybody here has to pull their own weight. We need to go ahead and divvy up the chores. The teens cannot smoke and there will be no swearing. They're responsible for their own laundry, help with breakfast, load and unload the dishwasher. All the animals at the barn need to be fed, just anything that, that I see that needs to be done. If the teens just refuse to be a part of our family, well then their world's going to stop. I think if it came down to a battle between us and the teens, we would win. Our teens have made it to Marion, a tiny country town at the edge of North Carolina's Blue Ridge Mountains. It's so dull. It's just green. If there's pigs or cows, oh. Ugh. Ugh. With every mile they drive, the comforts that these city slickers are used to are being left behind. Oh. <laughs> and their focus turns to stashing their precious booze and smokes. They look so boring. Oh, they don't smile. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Give me a... oh, oh, I was going to give you a hug. <laughs> oh. Hello. Hey. Nice to meet you, Celeste. Right? Take... Yeah, call me Cell, mate. Cell? Hey. Glad you guys are finally here. Yeah. So it's farm. Yeah, it's a farm. Fuck, I hate farms. We just want to let you guys know that there's no smoking anywhere on the property. <laughs> Just seconds into meeting their new family, our teens are already pushing their luck. Enjoy that cigarette. I will. It'll be your last for a while. <laughs> Do you guys smoke pot? I think that's a no, Kai. <laughs> this is my mom and dad, Sydney, my daughter, she's 16. Chloe is four. Hey. So um, we're going to go down by the fire pit, and uh, we're going to go over some house rules. The what? Fire pit. OK, so we have some house rules. Um, number one, be respectful to self and others. So Kai, you understand, do you have an understanding of what respectful means? Not being a. You got it. Number two, the needs of the animals here come before the needs of yourself. So when we do a lot of animal rescue. We have a lot of different animals. They can't take care of themselves. No smoking. On the property. On the property. Okay. No drinking. On the property. No drugs. On the property. No if swearing. Celeste thinks she can find a way around the rules, no she better think again. Um, so backing up to the smoking issue, I believe that Celeste has a cigarette stuck in her pant leg. <laughs> so... Nice try, <laughs> Celeste. I forgot about that. This farm itself is over 100 years old. We, we try to keep a lot of the things, the buildings and stuff, as close to original as we can. The one thing I did not want to go to is a farm, and that's where I go to. Like Farm animals stink, they're annoying, they're just ugly. There's no point of them. This is so stupid. <laughs> it's Kai's worst nightmare. And to make matters even tougher, he's being put to work straight away. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of show you how to clean the stalls out. 
We're gonna start with BJ here. Get a wheelbarrow. In life, there's lots of things that we have to do that we don't wanna do. But their don't world's bother. stopping. If you're not willing to do what we're asking you to do to take care of the animals, I'm not gonna provide you with the luxury of a toilet. I'm just gonna go around there then, eh? All right. Bye. I heard a flicker of a uh, cigarette lighter. Yeah? You know, you're pushing limits with me. What do you mean? You're smoking a cigarette? That's not going to happen. <laughs> not, not going in the barn. No. Oh, he definitely oh, no. was not no. adhering to our request to give us the cigarette. And so, you know, I didn't know if the next step was setting the barn on fire. Having worked with unpredictable teens, Mark has been trained by police in proper restraint techniques. I need the cigarette. And he's about to teach Kai a lesson. I'm gonna restrain him. Okay. Oh, what are you doing? You know, I, I made a choice when I had him restrained not to lay him down in the mud. He was begging oh. me. And I wanted to show a little compassion. <laughs> All right. Lighter, now. Oh, let me spin it. Oh, yeah. Just to let you know that this behavior has broken any trust that I may have started developing for you. So when we go to unpack, we'll unpack for you and you're gonna be searched. It's clear the teens haven't impressed anyone. <laughs> Are you expecting to find something out of this? If you blatantly lit a cigarette at the end of the barn, then I'm not gonna trust a damn thing you did. You should put your arms up over your head like this. What? <laughs> Jackpot. A dozen bottles of alcohol, along with cigarettes, have been discovered, smuggled in Celeste's bag. And they get the Lytle Zero Tolerance Treatment. Nah, no, that's... Not even Kai's grog that's stashed in the lining of Celeste's handbag is safe. With their smokes and booze gone, our no, teens have decided like enough's enough. I don't want to do so stupid. Night's fallen and they've taken off for the hills. <laughs> but they've got no idea of the danger that lies ahead. Out there we have a large population of bears, uh, coyotes, mountain lions and bobcats. We are in the middle of turkey season and, uh, you know, at dusk is when they hunt them. So, you know, they're at risk of being in the line of fire. But something has caught their attention on the outskirts of the Lytle property. Oh my God, yes! Open the door, see if it opens. It's a cabin being built for a disabled member of their new American family. Oh, shame! And the teens think it's a perfect opportunity to exact some revenge. Oh my god, I'm over the moon right now. Just when it looks like our teens are done, Kai discovers his favourite weapon. Oh, spray paint! Or decide they can see whatever. The teens have discovered Stella, a sick sheep that was rescued by the Lytles. <laughs> Let's just colour it in. And vandalise their sheep. <laughs> How random is that, eh? By abusing Stella, Kai and Celeste have broken the sacred Lytles. rule of respecting all animals. Oh, we should have done a cow. Our teens have no idea of the trouble they've just bought themselves. The first light of the new day reveals the full impact of their destruction. Mark is on his morning walk when he lays eyes on the crime scene. 
Well, looks like they've had a little fun right there. <sighs> they've had fun. I think I've seen enough. They spray painted the sheep. Not okay. I need spray paint. Okay. Mark gives the teens a taste of their own medicine. What are you doing? Ah, for now, too for. Oh, oh, what are you doing? I'm not a screamer or a yeller. I have natural consequences. Okay? While Celeste runs for the shower, Kai refuses to budge. So Mark decides to up the pressure. Oh, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> you wait, I'll get you back. <laughs> The golden rule I've lived by is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And, and these kids both defaced property and things that I care about. And for them to do that to Stella last night, uh, you know, that definitely goes against one of our house rules of uh, respect to the animals and also to self and others. Over the years, this farm has seen its fair share of drama. But the damage caused by Kai and Celeste has stunned the family. In particular, Grandfather Emmanuel. All right, I don't care for how old you are. Uh, you can laugh about it now, but you don't leave here till you fix that. Oh, my God. I took my hard-earned money that I retired off of to build that place. And you're not coming here and tiring it up. If you was a little older, man, me and you'd have it out. I worked my tail off on that thing. Which... It just ain't right. Yeah, I'm not scared of some old man. While Kai is clearly not prepared to take a backward step, Mark isn't budging either. What are you doing? He's confiscated Kai's favourite shoes, as well as Celeste's iPod. And just when it looked like things might calm down... You want to have a go, Kai, huh? What the f*** are you doing? Huh? I'm gonna get it tonight, and you're gonna get it too. <laughs> Not even Becky is safe. Our teens are using the kids' toys as ammunition. Oh, you're up, right, babe. <laughs> I'm gonna have your locked up. I'm done. Are you done? I'm done. Family. With the cops on the way. Kai and Celeste hit the road. That's a federal offence. You spray painted a helpless sheep. After a good shake up by the local sheriff, our teens have decided to stay on the farm but they're now made to face a shattered Becky. I took my children somewhere else because I don't trust you, either of you. And I shouldn't have to do that because this is my home. I have never experienced any kind of behavior like this in my house. Um, it's just took me by surprise that there are teens out there that are this unruly. Um, and I'm just, I'm just blown away by their behavior. Sorry, Becky. With all trust now gone, and the kids moved to another property, Mark has been forced to take drastic measures. For everybody to kind of be able to sleep uh, a little bit more peaceful, uh, we, we brought in security. They're trained in physical restraints. They're armed. Holy uh, we're not playing games anymore. But Kai and Celeste 
don't see what all the fuss is about. We vandalised the sheep. <laughs> we broke some windows in a house. I broke the letterbox. Oh, yeah, we broke the letterbox <laughs> and the, the sign. What have we honestly done that's that bad? Well, the teens have got all night to ponder that question. All exits are now being monitored by security, so they won't be going anywhere. Kai, time to get up. It's a new day, but Kai has woken up with the same old attitude. But Mark's got some cold reality for him. Oh. oh my God. Good morning, sunshine. Today, Mark is trying a new tactic. He's separating our teams. Celeste will stay on the farm to do chores, while Mark takes Kai to get supplies to clean up their vandalism. Paint stripper. How much you need? Small mess, big mess? I'd say it's pretty big. Well, I think Kai needs to learn a lesson of commitment and follow through. And I have a saying of name it, claim it, move on. You name what you did, you claim it, you own it. Yep, I did it. And now what am I going to do about it? Yeah, I'm going to clean it up. What, what do I need to do? There we go. Right. But the lesson Thank doesn't you. end there. Mark is also making Kai foot the bill. You need to spend your money on this. You've got money on you. Well, yeah. I'm okay. Kai, this is your mess. I ain't dead. <laughs> I'm not paying. A defiant Kai has decided he's not paying or staying. Mark catches up with Kai a mile down the road at a tobacco shop. He's going to buy smokes. Those Marlboros? Yeah, Marlboros. Um, how much for? He's 16. Oh, dude, you can't, you can't buy no cigarettes here, man. So close. <laughs> You're a grunk, mate. Are we going home or are we going back up here to the shop? Who? Get in the back. He says home. And I say shop. What the? What? Why are we back here? But Kai is still trying to dictate terms. Well, if I can get Siggy's, then I'll happily buy it. I'm not negotiating. I'll give you the money, but I'm not going in. I don't what is want wrong the money. I need you to go buy that stuff. And that is littering. I do not give two I don't care about your environment, Bo. The consequences are tomorrow you're going to jail. Oh my god, fine. I'll be a mature one out of us. That stubborn teen nil, persistent parent one. You know, I think Kai really thinks that I'm trying to show him who's boss. And in reality, I'm trying to keep his butt out of jail. But before they can leave the hardware store, there's one other small matter to take care of. If you want it picked up, you can pick it up yourself. Fine. There you go, that's trash for you. Mark feels that today could be a turning point in Kai's stay. He spots another opportunity to teach Kai a lesson. It's a prison crew on community service duty. I seen you guys out here and thought maybe if he uh, see that you guys aren't having a, a picnic, that he might learn something from it. Prison rules forbid these inmates from appearing on camera, but they still insist on giving Kai a warning. Yeah, it's, it's, it's easy to get in trouble, but you know what I'm saying? It's, it's hard to get out of it. It ain't no picnic. Not what you think it is. Yeah, they can, they can get you. We get paid 70 cents a day. 70 cents. 70 cents a day. 350 a week. Damn. Damn. 
It looks like Mark's instincts were spot on. Meeting the prison crew seems to have had a big impact on Kai. It makes me feel like, like something's actually kicked into me. I don't know. I should be in juvie now, but I got another caution. Normally you get three and I've got a lucky four. But next time I might not have another chance to, so like, I don't know, maybe I should knuckle down. Back at the farm, our teens are allowed to see each other again. But this time, they're joining forces for a positive reason. It's been a day of small triumphs for Kai, and for the first time, he's showing glimpses that his thinking might be changing. The dad is trying to talk to me and try to get to know me. He treats me with respect if I treat him with respect. Who knows, if all goes well, yeah, I'll probably start respecting him, get along. Celeste is playing along with the cleanup, but she's only doing the bare minimum. Celeste? I'm not touching glove. I don't really like them. I don't care if they don't like me. They're strange people, and after this week, I don't plan on ever socialising with them again. Oh, I just hate it. Everyone is starting to wonder if Celeste is one teen who is beyond redemption. Aussie teens Kai and Celeste are halfway through their stay with the family at their horse therapy ranch in North Carolina. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> So far, it's been the good, the bad, and the ugly from our teens. But today, Mark is finally getting a chance to show them what this ranch is renowned for. So, Celeste, we're just going to give you a few uh, instructions, and we would like for you to pick one of the horses that you relate to in some way. I don't like horses, and Mark, you know that. Right. I've told you that you, several you, times. Mark and youth psychologist Brenda have used horse therapy to help hundreds of wayward kids over the years. Go away. It's a lot easier way to try and get inside the kids' heads and in their worlds because they're not necessarily always aware that what they're saying about the horse is really what it is about them. I don't want to do this. Brenda and Mark were just like telling me, oh, does this horse relate to anyone you know? It's just staying right near you, doesn't give you space. I was like, well, it's like you, Mark. And then they told me we had to do it again, so that made my night. While Celeste is still proving a tough nut to crack, Kai seems to be slowly but surely taking things on board. These two horses' heads were facing you and now their butts are towards you. We're just kind of interested in if there's somebody that has come into your life, that there's times that they're being close to you and then they turn around and show their to you. Sounds like this girl. <laughs> that like, I sort of kicked her out of my life. <laughs> You've done that to people. Yeah. The one I picked, it reminded me of me because it's really stubborn and every time I tried to get it to go over an ob object, it wouldn't go. <laughs> yeah, it just started a lot of things with the other animals as well, I noticed. It's actually pretty cool, like, it's interesting learning more things about yourself. With Kai's continued progress, it's time to give him a message from home. To my beautiful son, Kai, I must say, that home is definitely empty without you, and I'm missing you so much. I still find it difficult to comprehend you being on the other side of the world. I remember how I used to fret when Grandma or Nana would insist on babysitting you for the night. Even taking you to have your needles was an absolute nightmare for me. The sound of your crying tore my heart into a thousand pieces. So, my son, it's no secret how fearful and panicked I get when you go out with your friends and you don't call or even come home for days. 
I know that you're yearning for independence and the freedom to make your own choices. But sometimes life has a way of taking us in directions that we may not wish to go. Over the years, your dad and I have lost a lot of good friends and family members to poor choices. I couldn't bear the thought that I outlived my only son. I want you to know that no matter what life throws our way, I know you can rise above it. You'll always have my support and shoulder as long as you keep striving. Love you, my boy, always, Mum. Now I actually realise how much she's hurting and how much I've been hurting her. It doesn't feel good, like, to know that you've hurt your mum like that for that long. I reckon I'm gonna have to change, like, change something about it. Kai knows he's got some fences to mend. And a visit from grandfather gives him a chance to get the ball rolling. I come down here today to uh, try to make peace with you. Uh, I just didn't want you to go back home thinking that I still had anger in my heart for you. Just don't want you feeling bad towards me and I sure don't feel bad at you. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, bro. Okay. I'm sorry for what I did, yeah. Okay. Pretty stupid, eh? This family's made me feel for other people. Yeah, I do think this trip's like a new beginning like of a new me. While Kai has clearly turned a corner, Celeste is still stuck in her old ways. Oh my god. What will it take Ew. to get through to this stubborn teen? In Marion, North Carolina, it's show day at the local saddle club. Hey, Cameron. After a week of gradual improvement, Kai seems to be enjoying himself. Celeste has been a very different story. They've tried big. Oh, a bimmy! And they've tried small. It's been one step forward and two steps back. That's just stupid horse therapy. Despite her disinterest, it seems Celeste's emotions are bubbling just below the surface. I'm sick of this now. Oh no. I don't want to be here. I hate this place. I hate the family. Celeste's American mum, Becky, is all too aware of just how hard this week has been for her. Celeste is a good kid, I think, deep down. Um, I've watched her every day, um, and I think what she's had to go through this week, I think she misses her mom. because Her mom's the most important person in her life, and she's all she has. Becky knows there is no better time than now for some words from back home. Hi, my darling Sally Billy. By now you would be settled into your temporary home. I sincerely hope that this experience opens your eyes to opportunities and attitudes plus behaviour towards the family. Family is vitally important and as far as immediate family goes, it's just you and me, kid. Celeste, I hope that this experience can lead you to understand how it is to treat and respect your family. I see you treat your friends beautifully and my heart aches to have that same kind of treatment and respect instead of being told to shut the F up all the time. Nobody should be spoken to like that, and least of all the one person that loves you so unconditionally as I do. I can't accept it anymore. It is like a knife going through my heart with each of your outbursts. I do not want our relationship to spiral downhill. I want it to soar to new heights and reconnect to what we have had in the past. Celeste, from the day I found out I was pregnant with you to this very day, you have been my whole life. And I so look forward to seeing you soon and starting a fresh chapter in our relationship. Love and miss you, pumpkin mum. She's tried to make a new relationship so many times. 
She doesn't deserve it because she's all I've got and I'm really all she has <laughs> and I treat her like shit. I just want things to be patched up between me and mum before it's too late. While she may have found the horse therapy challenging, a softer side to Celeste has certainly been coming through with four-year-old Chloe. You have the longest eyelashes, they're so pretty. <laughs> Thanks. After such a tough day, Becky has decided that Celeste needs an outing with the girls. They're visiting a local adventure park. It's Chloe's first time on the high ropes and Becky wants Celeste to be a part of it. Oh, she looks so cute. Her foot's like the size of each hole. Yeah. Yeah. I've really grown on Chloe and hope she just doesn't turn out how I did when she's 16. This week has given me a new perspective on life itself because I now know that like everything is determined by choices. So I just need to learn the right ones. She understands what she needs to do to turn her life around. Um, and I think if she puts her mind to it, that, that she'll be able to do it. But the question still remains, will Celeste's new perspective stay with her when she lands back home? Aussie teens Kai and Celeste are nearly at the end of their time in North Carolina. It's been an exhausting but rewarding week. All right, we're going to hit the water. Yeah! And you're off. Yeah! Yeah! This week, I think I've thought more about life than I have in my whole life. It's been worth it, but if I could do it again, I would have done it differently. This week, I've learned Caring, pretty much. I'm glad that I came here, like, at least I got something good out of it that made me change, and I needed that. I don't even feel like drinking, and let alone smoking. <laughs> they're amazing people. Like, they have amazing hearts, and they're kind and caring, so I will miss them. <laughs> it's time for our teens to leave North Carolina and everyone's sad to say goodbye. Bye, Chloe. Bye. <laughs> well, almost everyone. Bye. Bye, bye. Yo, My little one. Yo, we, this week has ended the way I thought it would, but in no way did it start the way I thought it would. Oh, wow, I'm so sorry. I think in the long run, their experience here will help them to turn their life around. Come here, give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. I know that what has happened here is going to impact them, maybe not in the moment, but later down the road. It's been rough, but it's been rewarding. But absolutely 100% I'll do it again. I wasn't expecting as much of as an impact as I got. Like, they've made me learn new things and given me mad opportunities here. For someone to do that, that's worth missing, so I'm going to miss them. I don't know why I'm crying. Um, they're really nice people. Um, I'm really sorry for everything I did and put them through. They didn't deserve it at all. Jeez, you're so emotional, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. I'm happy I'm back in Sydney. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. Before I went overseas, I was a little shit and um, they've made me think and learn more things about myself, which I should improve. I'm very excited about having Kai come home, so I've been up all night getting it all ready. I'm hopeful and I'm really curious to, to see how he is when he gets back. We'll find out, I guess. Oh, hi, baby. Mm. <laughs> oh, my boy's home. Oh, yeah. Welcome home, buddy. Mm. 
Oh. Mm, hello. That was like the closest I've been to dad today. How was your fight? Gave me a nice warm tingle. It's, it's good. Yeah, I missed, I missed your feeds. I missed your, your cooking. Yeah, Kai seems a bit more, a little bit more open, a bit more happier. I think there's some change in Kai already. Just the way he talked about that therapy with the horses. It was so I can't explain it. It was really weird. Did it work? Did you relax? Yeah, it was, it was crazy. I've learned not to care about myself, but for others as well. It's just made me feel all different now inside, like all nice and kind. It's weird as I missed you too. <laughs> but it's a good feeling. It was so good to be home. The lessons that the family taught me over the week hopefully helped me building a better relationship with mum. I'm pretty excited. That's for sure, with Celeste coming home today. I am feeling a little bit nervous as to how the trip went. Because I'm at the end of my tether, I suppose, I'm really hoping that this has been successful. <gasps> Is that Celeste? <laughs> Hello, my precious girl. She was very affectionate, the most affection I feel I've had from her for a long time. Sorry. Sorry for what? <laughs> she said, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry is not something that's usually part of her vocabulary towards me. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Are you? Well, let's just make it better, eh? So to actually feel and see that emotion again was quite heart rendering. Mm. I quit smoking. Well, I'm very happy about that. I've changed the way that I think about doing things. So I think I'll be able to handle not going out as much and drinking as much. I'm hoping there's changes and all I can wish for is that there are positive changes. So far, so good. Let's just, you know, cross our fingers. Hopefully this experience turns things around.